is a little Jan and welcome to another replay cast. Today we are looking at the Object 263, the Russian tier 10 tank destroyer. I like to call this the shit box, the litter box. Could call it a piece of shit, but that would be too much, I think. Uh, so the 263, I played it like literally the entire day just to get this one replay to put on YouTube. And my opinion on this tank hasn't really changed too much. It has potential. But it is super, super, super clunky and super awkward to play. Which means that on the most part you're just gonna do, on average, you're gonna do rather poorly compared to other tier 10 TDs, especially the ones that hit much harder than this. But uh, it has this potential to have that one sick game where you just shit on the enemy team. And this wasn't even that crazy to be fair though. So starting off here with my usual aggressive middle play here, uh, only track the U100 but I should be able to at least shot one shot in uh, in him that actually does damage. Uh, but yeah, this position always kind of works. There's always, well not always, but like 75 to 90% of the time there's always one guy that you can shoot there. And if it's like that E100 you can actually shoot him multiple times, that's even obviously better for you. It's a bit awkward for this thing as you know, you don't have a turret, you have to hit the angle just right to even be able to do damage. And here I don't uh, do that, so I miss out actually on being able to shoot him there. The 57 uh, circles the house on the outside, so there's nothing I can do really about that. So the main issue is with the 263, why the potential that it has gets kind of ruined on average is, uh, well first of all you have absolute ass gun depression. So you have 4 degrees and uh, like if you compare it to tanks that are kind of similar to this with no turrets and back, or, uh, back mounted guns, the Panzer has 6, the Panther 2 has 6. I mean it's kind of weird to compare it with the tier 8 but it, like to be fair that's the most uh, reasonable comparison you can make with uh, the two tanks. Obviously the gun is pretty damn insane, you have 3000 BPM uh, even over that low, closer to 3100 with 290 pen and 550 damage per shot. But the problem with this tank is it, it's so clunky and so hard to get that gun to actually fire multiple times at anything really that the DPM really isn't all that useful in this tank. Obviously you can have this one game where you camp the red line and to be fair the best probably the best way to play this tank is mostly to be the red line sniper and then come in and see if what you can do but uh, I don't like to play that way so I often find myself just committing too aggressively for the damage just in order to be be useful for my team and not to, to be the last guy left alive to do 5k damage I don't really see that as being very helpful for my team and now you can see that I did get penned once and I, well, I did get penned twice and one of those shots actually was right through the gun shield there. You can see that armor is actually around 240 and it's really hard to angle that and in general this tank is really hard to angle because the side armor is absolute trash on this and also uh, the side armor contains ammo racks and I just realized that this play is pretty damn retarded so I'm just gonna pull back and, and uh, get uh, my thoughts together and see what place that are not actual as I can make and now when the 57 heavy committed suicide is actually is not that bad of a play to make and the other thing that makes this tank super awkward to play is that if you do go close range at brawl you would think that this tank has all it needs like sure you don't have gun depression but you kind of can work around it but the problem with this tank is that its armor becomes completely irrelevant the second your enemies load gold because it's kind of flat you still can bounce some and you do bounce some with this because you know it, there's still like around 30 uh, 300 armor frontally on this thing but most heat the most gold ammo at this tier is higher than that so you do get shit on for the most part by all gold ammo but uh, and if you play in close range that is especially true and especially when they know that you can just pen uh, uh, the armor that is the gun mantlet kind of area that you can bend that without even really shooting gold and then you're quite a lot of trouble because you don't have that much hit points it takes quite a while for you to actually be able to uh, angle this thing straight in order to shoot anything and uh, then it takes shit lot of time to fall back and 550 alpha isn't really good enough to do that especially with this kind of reload it take like it's not really a peekaboo tank like most other tier 10 TDs are. That's some retarded driving there by me. And we do auto aim that one. I don't know why the auto aim thing is broken in the in the 
replays so probably because of the server cross to mod that I have going but uh, hope you can get around it uh, anyways what I was saying is that this tank is not really good for peekable you can't peek shoot fall back and do it again like in an E4 like in an FA215Bs you kind of actually have to just sit there and take it because with this reload it doesn't really make a lot of sense to 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 do these peekable plays which is kind of annoying but then again 3k DPM when you're not being pressured when you can have a free reign on the enemy team is pretty damn sick and the damage builds up in this tank pretty damn quickly especially if you hit shots like this one but on any map that is not flat where there is already on this tank feels so underwhelming so bad and so frustrating to play that I don't even know like I I had maybe I played like around 10 to 15 games 10 of those I probably did around 2k damage and like three or four of those were above 5k damage. So that's not really all that good for a tier 10 TD. And again, auto aim goes, uh, my server reticle goes missing here, but you know, it's auto aim. So not really much to say about that one. But anyways, that's the game. And here is the end plate, ace tanker, high caliber, 6,435 damage done, 1,058 assist. That really picked up the ace tanker just because I managed to to kill the last leopard there. They get the shell proof or the fuck that real Ribron is called as well. So we did bounce quite a bit of uh, damage as well as picked up four kills and had 1187 base experience as well. One last thing I have to mention about this tank is that like whenever you're not facing your enemies frontally you're just a driving ammo wreck. This tank gets ammo wrecked so much because all the side, the entire side is ammo wrecked and it takes uh, 230 alpha gun to ammo wreck you with every shot in the side so yeah it's kind of annoying but at the same time the tank does have the potential it is super 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 clanky and that's why I won't really play it that much and uh, I wouldn't really, really recommend grinding this either unless you're like super into this play style but uh, for the most part this tank is quite a bit of a disappointment at least for me anyways I hope you guys enjoyed this replay cast and I'll see you on the next one